Round 7 saw the Eagles head down to Leaderville Oval to face the Royals, with both sides eager to claim their maiden win of the season. Unfortunately, West Coast will have to wait another week for their first Premiership points, as East Perth proved too powerful in the end and ran away 57-point winners. Welcome to the Waffle Show. Hamish is back at the desk this week, but he's probably a fair bit drier than he was on the weekend. Yep, a fair bit dry, but still pointsless, unfortunately. Uh, just the way it's been going as of late. Well, Hammer, the game seemed up for grabs at around the three-quarter time mark. How did the boys feel? What was the feeling around the guys? Because we were right in it. Yeah, I mean, we were three goals down, I think, going into the last quarter of 17 points. Um, so the contest was there, and we were right around the mark. And then, to their credit, they played a very good last quarter. They won plenty of contests where they needed to win, and they got the ball going forward. So they were, yeah, they were too good for us on the day. But uh, yeah, we were right in it at three-quarter time, and then they just kicked away, unfortunately. But on a positive note, unless you've been living under a rock for the last week or so, Elliot Yo finally made his return to playing football after dealing with his osteitis pubis injury since way back last year. Hammer, tell us what was your opinion of his performance and his impact? Yeah, it was very good to see Yoey back. I, uh, I did a bit of training with him throughout the week. So on Thursday, I was at, um, I did training with the AFL boys and just, he was on, like he was, at, in our match team, he was off, on fire. So it was very, very good to see him. And then I did a kick in warm up with him before the game and he just, you could see it in his eyes, he was ready to go. It had been a long time coming for him. I think he had 13 touches and eight tackles in what was 60 minutes of football. So to have that impact in a short period of time, I mean, it just shows the player that he is. You almost forget, I did certainly how good of a player he is, but uh, hopefully another couple of weeks uninjured and he'll, uh, he'll be back at AFL, no, no doubt. No doubt the AFL side will be very keen to get him back in the midfield. It was a pretty tough day goals-wise. Only three majors registered for the day for us, but they belong to Zach Langdon, Nathan Vardy and Callum Jamison. On the disposal side of things, Mark Hutchings, who we'll touch on a bit later, he's building some really nice form now. He led the way with 28. Ben Johnson stood up again down back with 19. And Braden Ainsworth rounded out our top three. He stays up there quite a while now with 16 touches. But we didn't escape the game unscathed, sadly. Jared Cameron had to be helped from the ground after this attempt at a mark and his ankle getting caught up underneath. We really love the forward pressure that he can bring and we really hope he has a speedy recovery. But it's a tough blow, Hamish, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately it is. He's, he's been playing some pretty good footy building into it. His fitness, his match fitness is getting there and his forward pressure, is, um, he brings it like no one else. So uh, it is unfortunate to see him go down, but hopefully he can be back pretty soon. But now it's time for the captain's calls. We spoke about him early on, Hamish. Mark Hutchings, his return, he's been building really nicely. How have you seen his form? But what's his role in the team? Because in the AFL side, we've seen him used as a tagger and to pretty good effect. What about the Waffle side? Is it similar? Uh, not really similar. Um, Hutch obviously tags at AFL level, but when he comes back to Waffle, he's, he's, I think he's a bit too good for that. So the way he's been building his form is really nice and we love seeing him win the footy at the contest. Uh, 28 touches on the weekend. He's definitely probably his best game back. But yeah, I think just the way he can win the footy and the leadership that he can bring at a Waffle level is, uh, is really good. So hopefully he continues that form going forward and uh, I don't think we'll need him tagging at, uh, at Waffle level because he's a bit too good for that. And one thing, Hamish, that we hope doesn't continue, but it's worth talking about, is when the weather absolutely buckets down, how much does our game plan change? Is it really a coach-driven thing or a player-driven situation? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. When, when it's just sort of light droplets, you can still play the way you normally play. But when the weather really starts to bucket down, that's when you sort of have to change your game plan. If it's just droplets, you can still play that shape football and the way we sort of like to play the game. But when it really starts to get wet, you, um, it's a player-driven thing. You change the ground, you want more territory, you're surging the footy forward. It's more contest as opposed to that shape and bake. You still try and use the numbers, but it goes from more of a slick, skillful type of game to more of a crash and bash and just get the footy forward. And speaking about going forward, our next fixture is going to be taking us down to free Community Bank Oval, where we're going to face the Bulldogs this Saturday at 2.10pm. Unfortunately, Steve Bandy and Tim Gossage won't be there to live stream, but the West Australian will be doing so, so make sure you check out that website. We'll see you there.